Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where we help you conquer the internet one video at a time. We cover everything from how to start a YouTube channel to how to make a video go viral. And now, here's your host, the one and only Dusty Porter. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 10th ever episode of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. We have made it to double digits, and for that, I am so excited. So today, we are going to be speaking with Dr. Mark Vaughn from Dr. Mark Vaughn Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel. But before we do that, I've got a few things I want to take care of here at the top of the show. Number one, thank you for everyone leaving the kind remarks over on iTunes. Please do that. I'll give you a shout out on the show if you do so, uh, and I would really appreciate it as it does help the show grow. Don't forget to go on over to our Patreon page uh, for as little as a couple of dollars. You can help us grow and keep the lights on here at the show. Use our Audible link. I'm not going to focus any more time on any of that stuff. All of that will be in the show notes if you want to help the show out, if the show has helped you out. So here at the top of this episode, I want to discuss something with you guys. And that's going to be the presentation of your channel. So when someone watches one of your videos, whether they find it via search or a suggested video, they're going to click on that link back to your channel. How your channel looks, whether that be the thumbnails on your videos or your channel artwork or your profile image, if all of this doesn't work seamlessly together, I know me personally, when I go to YouTube channels and I am watching a video and then I go back to the YouTube channel homepage, if it looks like they're not consistent with their uploads or if they don't care enough to have a YouTube channel banner uh, or if their profile image is blank, I'm not going to subscribe because I want to know this person is consistent with creating content that I'm going to have value or get value from on a consistent week to week or month to month basis. So one piece of advice I want to give you here at the top of this episode is make sure you have a profile image. Make sure you have that YouTube channel art. It looks good. And uh, uh, another freebie here, try to get it to where it's all in sync. It all looks uniform. So you don't want to have a profile image and a banner art that doesn't go together. Uh, something I done on my channel is I've kind of got the colors to where they're in sync to where they actually match and it's really helped me personally in my mind to say man that looks way better it looks uniform so try to get somebody you can go on over to Fiverr uh, get somebody for 5 10 15 20 bucks design you a really nice professional looking banner uh, to get you started and then you could hire someone after that and pay a little more money uh, at a later date if that's something that you're really wanting to invest in and I believe it's important it really is to really put a good face forward so when someone comes to your YouTube channel, that's that's your intro, right? That's that's what they're looking at. They're going to be looking at, hey, this person, this is their home base, right? Your YouTube channel, when they go there and they see all of the playlists, and that's another thing I'll get on in another episode, make sure you do playlist, make sure you have them there on your channel, and please, for the love of all things YouTube, have a channel trailer, whether it's you on camera saying, hey, my name is Dusty, and this is what my channel is about. Let people know, hey, here's what you're going to find on my channel. When you see a good movie trailer, when I see that Batman vs. Superman movie trailer, it makes me want to go see the movie. Now, obviously, I'm a nerd, so I'm going to see it anyways, but that trailer gets me all hyped up. So, Make a trailer there on your channel page that's going to get people hyped up and say, man, I've got to subscribe to this guy because I want to see what other stuff he's going to present to me at a later date that's going to be valuable to me. So that trailer, your YouTube channel, all of that is going to be your intro to your viewer, to your audience, to your community. So enough rant over. I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. If you want to, I have a bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel. If you want to check those out over at youtube.com slash technology guru. So guys, again, without further ado, I'm going to transition now into the interview portion of the show with Dr. Mark, and he has some really, really good YouTube value bombs to drop on you guys. So let's get into the interview. All right, guys, here we are on the interview portion of this episode, and I'm so excited to be talking with Mr. Dr. Mark Vaughn. He does family medicine in an independent office in Auburn, California. His YouTube channel is not his first venture into media. He was actually a broadcast major in college. He's been on the YouTubes for over six years. He has amassed over 700,000 views on YouTube from various descriptive medical videos that have helped patients all over the world. Dr. Mark, how are you doing today? 
Doing super. I'm really glad to be on the show. Well, I am excited. Uh, Dr. Mark actually uh, reached out to me. He had been listening to the show, uh, which excited me in the first place. I checked out his YouTube channel. We were kind of going back and forth, and I now have finally, after some sickness and some other things, we have finally gotten him on the show, and I'm so excited to talk to him as he is in a field that I think is extremely interesting when it comes to creating video content as a doctor in the medical field. And I'm so excited to kind of get his insight on a bunch of the stuff that we normally talk about on the show. So we are going to dive into these questions now headfirst and see kind of what Dr. Mark has to offer. So question number one is, how did you get started on YouTube? It's even hard to remember now. It's been several years uh, in the Auburn Medical Group channel, we started just, uh, oh, about five years ago with the idea of just getting something out there like many businesses were who were early at it, just to uh, have a presence. And that was about it. Uh, before that, though, I would just put up, you know, whatever videos we made of, of home stuff on my own private YouTube channel. And then over the years, we've been just... Uh, as the time allows and as the availability of the equipment at work allows, making it bigger. Now, when you set out to create a YouTube channel for the Auburn Medical Group, what was your initial reason for doing that? Probably different than what it is now. I think initially it was just basic marketing um, and, and a little bit, play on my part. Just I, I enjoy playing with video, so, so that was a part of it. Okay. Um, now, how has YouTube helped your business as far as like maybe not specifically the Auburn Medical Group, but I know we talked about pre-show. It's actually helped you in local search results. Now, maybe you can expound upon that a little bit, but how has it helped you in your business? Well, I don't have numbers that will link it to YouTube necessarily. Right. Uh, although I could probably get those if I looked hard at the Google Analytics. But what we find, find is that we are coming up quite often on searches for a doctor in our local area, and that um, the Google Analytics, of course, or my Yahoo hosting shows that people are either clicking through to the phone number or clicking for directions. And, okay. and pretty good numbers. Uh, right. So we've got what's essentially new patients uh, using it. Okay. And you've told me before that you actually, you link to your website now and all of your new videos, you link to that website. And uh, as I know, doing this for a good while, you know, those links and those videos actually play uh, a lot of weight when it comes to your search results within Google. Obviously, Google and YouTube are owned, they're, they're, they're Google, they, you know, they're owned by Google. So uh, basically, that's going to help you in the long run, long tail, when you create this content and basically... Each time you create a video, that's another backlink to your website. It's another one, and it ranks you a little bit higher in their search results as having legitimate content right. related to whatever's being searched for. So, for example, right now I'm uh, making a thumbnail for <laughs> – that's funny, making a thumbnail. It's it's of a toenail <laughs> removal. It's a thumbnail of a toenail. It's uh, <laughs> and, and what I'm doing is – Sometime in the future, when somebody's searching for something related to their ingrown toenail, right? Uh, and if they at all put in any kind of geographic limitation on that search, right? I am definitely, certainly, if they're my geographic region, definitely coming up, right, for them to see, and not only coming up for them to see, but coming up as a video in the Google search results. And we know that people go to watch a video before they go to a web page search result. Absolutely. I, I can't stress enough how important it is if you're a business and you're not doing video content, you, you're just you're crazy. You're missing the boat because those links are so strong. It's it's so valuable in the Google search algorithm. If you have those links embedded into your description, it doesn't matter if they're at the top of the description or the bottom. None of that matters. But if you have that information there in that YouTube video, that's just another link being added to your to your uh, plethora of links that you have out on the internet. It's such an important thing to remember if you're a business and you've got a YouTube channel, always link back, always give the viewer a way to stay in your sphere. And that's what Dr. Mark's talking about when he's talking about creating this thumbnail. 
of a toenail. Whenever anybody searches for that specific <laughs> term, he's going to I'm come up, to especially in his area. So that is some really, really good advice and some definite, definite gold there for you guys to, to use in your own channel. So question number three is this. What is something that you wish someone had told you when you first started out on YouTube? Probably, I, I would have liked for somebody to to emphasize the um, immediacy needed of getting out and just doing it and not waiting to do things perfectly, which is something I'm continually battling. I think that's true for a lot of people on YouTube, this war between getting it perfect, uh, being the enemy of getting it done. Mm -hmm. So you found yourself maybe spending too much time on the smaller details as opposed to actually getting any content out at all. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, you know, if, or, or not even getting started. That's the other thing. If you go, oh, I, I don't have a camera other than my cell phone. I, I, I can't do this. Right. You know, or I don't have as good of an editor. Um, I'm going to have to edit it on my phone rather than be able to actually do it in a in an NLE on a, on a computer and it stops people from even doing it. And so what they need to do is just pare down what it is they're doing to make it appropriate for the tools they do have. One of the things that limits me is, uh, well, you, well, you may not be able to tell, but having personnel, you know, having people free to, to do something on the scale, I'd like to do it. Well, sometimes you need to just say, you know, I'll let my camera operator slash medical assistant take care of the stuff on the other side of the office he's doing, and I'll just I'll just whip out the phone and do it right. this way. And yeah, it's not going to be the quality we like to have, and maybe it won't even end up on YouTube. Maybe it'll be one of our many videos that um, are, are just on the hard drive um, for potential to edit. But do it, because there may be a day when you get something wonderful, something awesome, and you never would have had it had you not just whipped out the cell phone because you were waiting for doing it right. That's, that's some great advice in that there's a lot of people listening to this right now, and I know because they've contacted me via email, and they're just so scared. They're so scared to pick up that phone. They're so scared to pick up that camera because they're maybe they're afraid of how their voice sounds or they're afraid of how they look on camera or they're, like you said, they're afraid their videos aren't going to be perfect. You're not going to have videos that have Hollywood quality production when you first start out. You need to understand that. And if you do understand that, you can always improve the quality of your content over time. And that's such an important thing to remember. And Dr. Mark, you, you're talking about it in such uh, such a great way in that just do it. You know, put that content out there. You, you want to put out quality content. You know, don't hear me say you just put out trash content. That's not what either of us are saying. But in order to actually have a channel, to amass a subscriber base in a community, you got to provide them with good, valuable content. And you've got to be able to hit record in order for you to do that. So that's some really good advice there. Um, question yeah. number four is this. This is one of my favorite questions because I, I learn something every time I ask it. Um, are there any YouTube tools that you could recommend uh, to our audience that you could not live without? Something that you use daily uh, whenever you create content? Uh, tool, Something from YouTube or just... Uh no, 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 not specifically from YouTube, but something you use for your YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm sorry, I need to rephrase that question. Well, I, I would say yes, but they don't have to use the same one I'm using. For me, it's Photoshop for my thumbnails. But that's not the, in fact, there's, there's stuff now available free that you can get that you don't have to. Uh, you know, I think of my son, if, if I was my son's, he, he's, a, he's in college. And he is a user of Ubuntu or um, Linux, Unix, that, that world of free operating system. And, and there's, I know there's lots of free stuff on other operating systems too. But he's always showing me uh, photo editors, video editors, all the stuff that's free to use. And uh, I, I'm still using my CS6 Adobe products from back before they had Creative Cloud because they're great tools and they work for what I need to do. And, and I, I'm familiar with how to use them, the user interface. No, I, I completely but agree. But if I was starting over, I'd be getting the, the free photo editor. I'd be making my thumbnails right, on that. Right, right. Now, how, how important 
Well, before I even ask that question, I want to follow up with what you said. I actually subscribe to the Creative Cloud Suite. So I, I you know, I have Photoshop, Adobe Audition is what I do my audio in. Um, Premiere Pro is what I do a lot of video in. So, you know, I am a complete Adobe uh, fan. I definitely uh, would, I'm, we're not sponsored by Adobe, obviously, but I love their products. Uh, and it's a great way that they have set it up to where you don't have to shell out that $2,000 to buy those products you could actually subscribe to uh, get the, the continual updates for like 30 bucks or 40 bucks a month and you can always have access to Photoshop and Adobe Audition and, and things like that. So that's a great, great tool. Now, to follow up what you said, how important, and I, I, I mentioned this to you before we came on the air, how important do you think it is to have good quality thumbnails as opposed to picking just one of those three options that YouTube provides you after you've recorded and uploaded your video? How have you found that creating those high quality thumbnails, how have you found that to help you? I found that when I looked back, well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't just say thumbnails. Um, thumbnails, I depend a little bit on other people's data because I didn't really look at it myself the best. Uh, in fact, what I've done with some of my most popular videos is gone back on the most popular ones and added thumbnails to them to help promote them even further, uh, ignoring some of the ones in between that weren't that great of a video. It's not really going to be watched that much. There's no reason to really go to the effort on that. I'm not going to get as much bang for my buck as a really good video, putting a thumbnail on that that catches someone's eye that then shares it. So I, I do know it's made a difference. Um, a way that you can track a difference, of course, is knowing what you did and then seeing the uh, looking at Google Analytics or YouTube Analytics and seeing the jump. And the thing that I did that with was using Google AdWords suggestion tool for terms to put in the titles and in the description. And it, it's I don't even know if people can get to it who don't have an AdWords account because every time I tried to get into it, it asked me to sign in. But there is, there is a way to get this data where you put in search terms and Google will tell you how many times those terms have been searched for. But not only that, it gives you a whole page, depending on the search term, of, of little ways of pairing that term up with other terms. For example, the one I just did, let me look it up for you so I can tell you. Keyword planner, that's what it's called, keyword planner. So if you look into Google AdWords keyword planner, maybe you'll be able to get it. So I put in... Uh, some words related to this toenail removal I did. So I put in uh, ingrown toenail removal, and then I, it gives you a list. And so it gives me what people have searched for and how many times they've searched for it on average in a month. So for example, the very top one is ingrown toenails searched 194,000 times on average in a month. And then the next one is toenails. The next one is ingrown nails. The next one is surgery ingrown. The next one is treatment ingrown. And so what I want to do is take those terms that are coming up and get them as, as close to the beginning of the title of my video as possible. And then in the description, have them as close to the beginning of the first sentence as possible. So I'm going to rank as high, highly as I can. And I did see a difference when I did that. I, I didn't actually track the difference with making thumbnails, though. But uh, I, I do know that the, the data is out there that supports good thumbnails that show um, something that really represents visually what somebody's going to see in the video. And for myself, the type of videos I make, having gigantic font text saying those same terms that people are searching for, so it jumps out at them. And I think a lot of people... No, go ahead. No, no, no. C continue. You, you're, you're on a roll here. Uh, a lot of people, when they're looking for something on YouTube, they see those videos that come up with the very big font with some kind of uh, uh, colored background to, to make the, the letters stand out so that you're not losing them in the subject of the picture. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. like, like just, I just use a green rectangle behind mine and then have white text on it. So it's very readable. Some people will make the mistake of not doing that, and the text is not necessarily readable because the color of their font may match something in the picture, and you, you lose the differentiation of the, the text from the picture. So I find that when I'm doing searches, that's what I'm often having my eye drawn to. I may not click on it, 
but I'm going to look at it when I may not look at something that's not catching my eye. Another thing about thumbnails, uh, having the simplest image you can, taking up as much of the picture as you can. You know, if you get a big wide shot of, of a, a say it's a medical case and you have a patient in the room and you can see them sort of on one side of it, you see an exam table, you see all the way across the room to the sink, you have no idea what it's about. But if you have somebody's toenail taking up a third of the space of the of the thumbnail right you you know exactly what it is no you you absolutely do and the reason why i, I was kind of being quiet there is because you had so much good stuff uh, if you're listening to this and you want to know about search and about the google adword tool i actually use those tools myself and i couldn't there's no reason me explaining them any further you did a great job explaining how to utilize those tools I just want to follow up with what you're saying with a couple recommendations to, to our to my audience. Uh, number one, there are some free tools out there you can use that I always want to recommend to you. If you're looking for a free photo editor, you don't want to get Photoshop, there's one that's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's a great tool. It is absolutely free. Check that out. Absolutely free. And then if you're looking to record audio, I actually do my audio and video separately and then sync them later. It actually makes the quality better. There's an audio uh, application that's called Audacity. I actually have some tutorials on how to do that. Maybe I'll throw those in the show notes of this episode here, but that tool is absolutely free as well. So I don't want to hear this about, I don't have the money to start a YouTube channel. There's two tools right there that will eliminate two of the costs and they're absolutely phenomenal tools that will bridge the gap until you can maybe get Photoshop or you can get Adobe Audition or whatever you're going to want to do. And then I'll go ahead and link in the show notes as well, a link to the Google AdWords tool that will help you when creating these videos. Uh, and what Dr. Mark is saying is so true. Searching for terms and then putting those relevant terms, maybe not the exact terms, you know, you don't want to do clickbait. I, I tell people, you don't want to have clickbait on YouTube. You don't want to advertise one thing with your title and thumbnail and they click on the video and they watch that video and it's not about at all what you've advertised it to be about. That's not what we're saying. We're saying whatever the video is about, you want to be able to capture as many people that are searching for that video. And a little pro tip here, if you do clickbait, if you advertise with your title and thumbnail something that is not actually in the video content, that will make people click away from that video once they get in there. And one of the most important and crucial analytics that YouTube tracks is the watch time. And that's going to hurt your channel and your video in the long run. So remember that, make sure you create valid content, truthful content, but you definitely want to make it look good. Something that I've recently done, uh, Mark, actually, is now I create a, tr a rectangle that is a bright color that I put around my videos on my thumbnail whenever I create my thumbnails. And whenever I'm scrolling through search results and I search for one of my search terms, mine just sticks out because I have that really bright colored uh, rectangle around. And I've seen a lot of bigger YouTubers start to doing this, so I'm not going to claim that I created this concept. But definitely, definitely think about that. It's almost as if you're highlighting your thumbnail when you're going through there and people are searching. Like on eBay, a featured listing is going to come up and it's going to have like a bold color around it. Well, what I've started doing is doing the same thing with my thumbnails and putting a bold color around my thumbnail, and that really allows that thumbnail to stand out. And I've noticed, I actually have tracked it, I have noticed the click-through rate of those videos are almost 20 to 30%, actually 23 point something percent higher to get clicked on than those videos who don't have that rectangle. So that's just a little food for thought there, a little freebie there that we were throwing out at you. So that's some really good stuff there. You might want to go back and listen to that whole segment again. I think there's some really good content there that you can dig into uh, and really dive into, dissect it, and then utilize it in your channel. So moving on, the next question is, if you could give one piece of advice to an emerging YouTuber or someone who's getting started on YouTube, what would that piece of advice be? I'd say, probably say, pace yourself. And that may not mean what people think. Um, it, it's both for not going too fast nor going too slow. And we both probably have found ourselves doing this where 
you're on a roll and you have a lot of good content, so you put it out. Uh, and then there's other times where uh, you know you just life, you know, just, there's distractions, there's things that need to get done, and you're not able to come up with things. Being regular in social media is a big deal, whether it be podcasting or YouTube, and you want to be consi- consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. I preach that all the time. You're exactly right. So I really can't explain why I listen to your podcast, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, can't, I, I searched for it and then went back and looked at all the episodes and then subscribed. But you, you do want to have that consistency. You don't want to burn yourself out by just going hog wild and putting everything out when you can. Go ahead and save stuff. In fact, one of the things I'm doing is trying to get as much content as I can. Like I said, pull out the phone if I can't get the medical assistant with the camera. But I may not use it. But it's there for a dry spell that may come the next week or two. And I go, oh, man, I've got nothing. We've had no cases or uh, you know, if no patients wanted to share their experience with the Internet, what am I going to fall back on? Well, if I haven't just used everything I could, I've got these cases saved on the hard drive from you know a week ago, two weeks ago. Oh, okay. That, I, I was hoping to have something better. That's why I didn't use it at the time, but I got nothing now. I'll, I'll put that one out now. No, that is, that's something we haven't discussed really on the show yet, but I mean, I've talked about consistency, but it's so important that there are going to be dry spells. There are going to be spells when you just cannot think of a video and you're like, man, I don't have any content. That's just going to happen. Whether you get sick or whether life gets in the way or whatever that reason may be, if during those times of where you've got all this content that you can think about, go ahead and record those and don't don't just explode and do them all like upload three or four videos a day. Space it out. Be patient. I know me personally, there have been times when I'm like, oh man, this video is so good. I want to get it out there. And you, and you, know, you, t- you top one or two or three videos in a day or in one or two days. But if you pace yourself and you spread those videos out, you are actually going to notice that you get more traction because you're not offloading all of your content in one specific day. People can't watch all this stuff. There's millions of of hours of videos uploaded a day, billions per week. It's crazy. So space it out. You know your your audience will be ready for it, and be patient and don't don't blow it all at one time. You know that's something that's so important because the one thing I struggle with with the podcast as opposed to YouTube is it's difficult for me to find as the show is is growing and getting started it's difficult for me to find guests and and you know right now i actually have 3 or 4 episodes in the bag and as a podcast it's so fantastic to know that i have these episodes that are that are already in 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 the bank and whenever that day comes that i want to release them i'll have that and i do that a lot of times with youtube and the one thing i would say is just understand, you don't have to publish your YouTube videos that day. You can schedule a YouTube video. I actually have a tutorial on how to do that. You can schedule a YouTube video to come out a specific time of day, a specific day of the week, and you can do them all in one sitting and then have them release at a periodic pace. So remember that. That's some really good advice. Really good advice. Um, the next question I have for you as we're getting closer to the end here is, do you have any books that you could recommend to the audience that have helped you uh, on your journey here with YouTube and your business? Uh, books that have helped me on my journey. Um, well, certainly all of my medical texts. <laughs> <laughs> Def, definitely the medical text, but any have you read anything about like the social media, how to incorporate that with business, or or are, are you an avid reader? I I uh, I have read, you know, I, I still have some, some leftover uh, experience and studying from when I was a broadcasting major in college, and I but I, I have read a, a book on lighting, lighting for television and video. Um, I have read. Also, um, some material on uh, story writing, screenwriting, although I I certainly have not found that uh, I've become a a great screenwriter for having read it, but good principles to understand uh, because anything you put on YouTube is a story. And if you understand that, you're going to get 
more engagement with your viewers and more shares. Even if you don't understand how it's a story, like, you know, you can come into a medical procedure and going, that's not a story. That's just a medical procedure. No, you make it a story. You, you know, you bring out the patient talking about when it starts, which right now I'm convicting myself. I didn't do that today when I did this, this procedure. But if you do that, if you can have some kind of follow-up, like one time I was able to put in, uh, let's see, when's this video coming out? I think it came out Friday, the one I put out just last Friday on uh, ear infection. The guy came back. It had actually already been loaded to YouTube and was scheduled, like you were saying, schedule the release uh, at regular time. It was scheduled to be released last Friday, but he came in uh, Wednesday or Thursday, and I got a little more video of how his ear was resolving. And all I had to do was go back into the editor just put that over the video. I, I didn't have to do anything to the timeline at all. Just put that over what was already there and a little text over it saying that this is a however many days later and it's improving. And then re, re, um, render it and re-upload it to YouTube. So it was a little bit of work, but it wasn't that much work and it, it turned it into a story with an ending. No, sure. I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. That's that's some good advice right there. Some good advice. Now, I actually have a follow up question. That's not a normal question for the show, but just for what you do and what you just said, I'm actually curious. What do you have to do when you have other people, like patients, who are going to be a part of one of your videos? What's the process like of getting somebody else who? Uh, I mean, like, do you sign papers, consent forms? What's the what's the process you go through to get these people? on camera to allow you to publish them on the internet if other people are wanting to do this and get people involved in their YouTube channels? I, I have a media release. I think I just Googled for a standard media release. Uh, I didn't have one drawn up by an attorney myself and uh, kind of took elements out of it that I thought really fit for what we were doing. Um, I may have even copied one from something I'd been the talent in in the past and just modified it to our purposes. Uh, some elements that you want to make sure are in there. Of course, I'm not an attorney, but you, you want to include elements like uh, that they, what the compensation has been agreed upon uh, and make sure it's very clear. And, and with all of mine that I've ever done, it has said that there's none. You get nothing for this. You, get, you have no uh, call for future distribution in any format, in any, any time in any country, you you already got whatever compensation you you're getting out of it, which is nothing. Now, that sounds really really harsh, but it it is the only way you can truly own your content and not have some kind of hooks in it that could pull on you later and really really cause serious problems. Because all it takes is one person who was in your video saying, you know, I I don't want to be in your video anymore. Well, um, give me money for it or pull it down from YouTube. And all you can do is lose any future revenue from that uh, unless you work out a deal with them. So it's for the protection of your craft. It's a protection of your art to get that signed. Um, and, and you know what? I have never, ever had someone seriously ask a question about it. They just sign it. Maybe they'll joke about it. Oh, I'm getting my, my, my royalties, whatever. Let them, let them joke, but... <laughs> A lot of times they're yeah. A lot of times they're actually intrigued of of the the notion of actually being on camera. You know, they're they, they're intrigued of oh man, I'm going to be on YouTube. You know, so so that kind of thing can be uh, alluring for people who are who you're asking to do this with. People get get really weird when you point a camera at them. Uh, I've I've noticed that. Uh, but the last question I have for you is kind of a fun question, but it's it's always fun to hear what the guest answer with this question. Uh, what are some guilty pleasure YouTube channels that you watch? Uh, some some that are fun that may not be in any way related to your craft. Okay. Um, if you're to say guilty pleasures, I, I haven't watched it for quite some time, but I just with my my partner here at work, uh, we can quote. Uh, Homestar Runner or Strong Bad or Coach Z at any moment in, in character voice, and, and we immediately know what the other guy's quoting. 
I don't know if anybody, if any of your audience watches Home Star Runner, but uh, it, yeah, don't do it. It's it's a waste of time and and <laughs> it does not make you any smarter. Uh, I've been pretty regular with Casey Neistat here for over a month, uh, watching him every night. In fact, for a little period there, I was actually getting my wife to watch it, which is quite an accomplishment. Uh, Casey's a vlogger. He uh, he was on the red carpet at the Oscars um, when all the press was like off to the side. He was allowed to walk up and down the red carpet because Samsung had him carry around their brand new uh, S7 that hadn't come out yet at that point. It still may not have come out. And their 3D camera, and they wanted him to just do what he does. And they gave him free reign, and he just walked around with it and then put it on his vlog like he normally would. He didn't do anything different than what he normally does. He just vlogs what he does during the day. So he walks around with the camera and shows what he's doing. So he, he's a incredibly successful uh, vlogger. I was looking at uh, Social Blade. I'm, I think you've talked about that on your show. And his, his numbers are ridiculous. You know, He makes several times my income at the conservative estimate just – on YouTube. Right, right, right. Well, that that's it's always great to hear the inside of, of someone who is on YouTube, kind of some channels that they actually enjoy. Uh, so with that, we are going to close this portion of the show. Uh, Dr. Mark, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to uh, say to the, to the audience? Oh, well, I guess my closing remark would be always be promoting your show. We are Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel. You can find us at Auburn Medical Group just searching on YouTube. See, I just did it. They need to be doing that with their channel. Oh, yeah, if you're interested in me, you can follow my Twitter. It's at Dr. Vaughn. Vaughn is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N. So it's, uh, well, doctor is spelled out D-O-C-T-O-R V-A-U-G-H-A-N at Dr. Vaughn. And then I, I do Periscope sometimes. Um, and then the website for the practice is auburnmedicalgroup.com. And there should be links there to everything that matters. Well, fantastic. Go check that out, definitely. Uh, if you're listening to this, go check it out. Follow him. Uh, also, don't forget to support the show on over at Patreon. Uh, I know I keep telling you guys this, but for uh, very little each month, you can support the show. It helps me keep the lights on, helps me uh, keep paying for the hosting, and then helps me continue the show and have other great guests like Dr. Mark on the show. You can also support us by using our Amazon link or by going on over and using our Audible link and supporting us by signing up for Audible. It's free. You get a free book and it helps us out. We do appreciate that. And without further ado, I'm going to end this portion of the show. Dr. Mark, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. And thank you. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. And that's a wrap on episode 10 of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. I would like to say thank you again to Dr. Mark for joining us this episode. I think there was a lot of value in this episode. I definitely have listened to it already twice in addition to editing the show. And I have learned and have written down some notes uh, that he had mentioned in the show. So hopefully you guys found some value out of it. If you did, again, don't forget to visit our Patreon page. Use our Audible links to help support the show. And until next time, guys, keep making that content. You've been listening to the YouTube Creators Podcast. We want to thank you and invite you to subscribe to the show, as well as support us on Patreon for great perks, such as having your YouTube channel featured on the show and a link on our website. Until next time, keep uploading those videos.